The hottest podcast in the city, the smartest dumb people. I'm here with my nigga, that dude Johnson. You know what I'm saying? We go way back like four flats on the Cadillac. Y'all tune in every week or every time. Hit the like button. Subscribe. Do what you're supposed to do. Like, comment, share. Tell your people about it. Y'all know what it is. It's the smartest dumb people. See, man, when you get that type of Because he clearly seen with other people. So, like, this is a story. This is the best podcast in the city. Like, Thank you. I'm not pandering. You know what I'm saying? And they take vocals and, you know, split them. I sound a little too hot. You're a real hustler, huh? That's, that's pretty neat. Uh, right into it. But, uh, I also, uh, met with the team. She, they know she likes to go outside and play soccer by herself. We have to. about what that entails and what's involved with it because it is a, a long lengthy process and it also is self-funded and so he has a GoFundMe that we're going to let you guys know about um, in a few minutes um, or later on in the show um, to help him get money to fund his pilot license but um, David Mitchell was supposed to be here today to talk about his big vindication you know he beat the three felonies so he was found not guilty for all three felonies but he forgot that his son's birthday party was today and i completely believe him so um he's going to reschedule for the end of the month and so we'll get to talk to him later on about his story but um for right now we're going to talk to the two young black american men who are here yes. today yes. and i just want to ask them um, how was their week? How was your week so far? I'll let him go first. Go uh, ahead, yeah, okay, down. so uh, my week was good. Next week I'm uh, about to get ready to go to college and get back to college. And my birthday next Saturday. So okay. I'm going to all the Leos out here. Okay. Uh, what, uh, what school do you go to? <laughs> I got a UNO. Okay, UNO. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's dope, man. Uh, yeah, that's dope. Uh, I woke up with a swollen lip today, so I'm mad as fuck. Yolanda got me on the show because one of our guests didn't show up, and that's my job. You know what I'm saying? Being the CEO, if motherfuckers don't show up, I got to step in, so I'm here. But my lip is swollen. I woke up, and I was like, damn, my lip really fucking hurt. And I go to the bathroom, and it was really big. I don't know. I might have monkey pox. might not. I don't know. We'll see. Hopefully, I don't. How was your week, yo-yo? So, my week was, um, it was conflicting uh, with emotion because... Um, one of the ladies that I work with, her son was murdered on Saturday night. Mm. So we had a prayer walk for him um, on Tuesday night. And so it's just been one of those weeks. He was only 18 years old. It was on the news. And you just kind of take a second to rethink about your own life. Um, what you value and what is really important to you and so I was able to spend some time on Saturday um, with um, my aunts and my mom and some of my cousins just hanging around eating just enjoying each other and enjoying that you know we are still here on this earth and you know we're just finding 
better value in that um, as far as black families go. So that's kind of how my week went. It was kind of highs and lows, highs and lows. But um, it's, it's kind of sad that your week had to involve somebody being murdered, but it's so common in the black community. We just say, like, if this was a white podcast, let's just be honest, if this was a white podcast, and that same thing came out of your mouth, it would have been some research done behind it. Yeah. Due to the fact that we are a black community, due to the fact that we are a black podcast, yeah. they, when we say murder, we just, life goes on. You know, but in, yeah. in, in white communities, they don't just say murder and, and keep the sentence going. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's kind of sad that you had to go through that this week yeah. and the way it was expressed. You didn't do that wrong. It's just the way we are. You I know. know I mean? it, in this, in the black community, it shouldn't be normalized. We shouldn't it's, be numb to it. Right. But the young man who was murdered, um, he was um, a white young male, and so it is. Um, it's not like a common thing that's publicized. Mm -hmm in the white community as it is for the okay, black community. So the black community, when someone is murdered, is just out there, out there, out there, out there. It's out there so much that the black community becomes numb to it, but when the white community has something like that happen, it is a shock. Yeah, it is. And it's only a shock because it's not publicized as much as the black community's you know, pain is publicized. If it was publicized as much, their community might be numb to it too. I, you know, I don't know, but you know, we were just there for her. You know, on Tuesday night, some of our other fellow coworkers came down to the prayer walk with her, just to hold her up. But I've done other prayer walks as far as the black community and things like that, just holding up that parent. Mm -hmm. You know, it's 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 hard, and it's just something. If you're strong enough to do it definitely be there for someone you know who is going through something like that but um we are going to move on and um we do. Looks good, oh thank you <laughs> thank you so we want to talk today um to denzel and uh he's going to tell us his journey um through wanting to become a pilot and how that aviation um, navigation goes so play yeah so first we're gonna play his um, GoFundMe clip and then we're gonna come back and talk to him. My name is Denzel Dial I'm currently an uh, aviation student at the University of Nebraska Omaha uh, I'll be graduating in 2024 and I'm just gonna be telling you a little a uh, little bit about myself so um during my eighth grade year the mentoring program 100 black men took me on a discovery flight uh, Discovery flight was just a small flight in a, a Cessna 172 uh, around Omaha, Council Bluffs, and Lincoln. And that was when I, I first um, got the passion of flying. Um, I was scared of roller coasters my whole life. I think about uh, two months before that, I actually passed out on a roller coaster and it was a fun. So it was just uh, a crazy experience. I knew from that day forward, I always wanted to be a pilot. Once I get my commercial, I want to work for the airline for about 10 years. And then, you know, I want to become like a, a worldwide mentor or like a worldwide flight trainer where I just go to different cities and reach out to, you know, black communities and, you know, build them up. I was fortunate enough to have a black father that raised me in church and showed me right from wrong. But for the kids, for the young black males that didn't, I'm currently working for the 100 black men at the North Omaha Boys and Girls Club as a mentor. This summer... Young black males such as myself and all minorities will be given the opportunity to fly drones and paint gliders at, um, uh, at a variety of different airports. It's currently only 3% black airline pilots and um, financial, financial um, problems is one of the biggest reasons why I would say. Um, it's $250 an hour for flight time plus the, you're paying for the flight instructor. And um, I'm currently doing that, plus playing uh, college. So I, today, am asking you to please donate to my GoFundMe and help me to continue doing what I'm doing and more for the community. Thank you. Okay, so we are back with Denzel. And so he's going to talk to us about how did you first get interested in being a pilot or wanting to fly planes? So um, my eighth grade year, I joined the um, 100 Black Men Mentoring Program. Mm. Okay. And um, there they um, 
They uh, called my mom, the current uh, Nebraska State Treasurer, John Ewing, called my mom and asked if I wanted to go on a discovery flight. Yeah. Um, and basically, like, a flight around Omaha and get to see, like, uh, Miller, went to Iowa. Yeah. Get to see around Omaha. And it was um, it was crazy because I actually passed out on a roller coaster. Oh, like, did you? Two weeks before that. But, like, once I got into the plane, it was, like, a whole different experience. They let me control it. And it was just, like, it's something I want to do. So, um... So throughout high school, I had trouble, I had struggles, and I had to um, get my grades up senior year. So yeah. once I got my grades up, um, I found out UNO had an aviation program. So okay. And then, um, and then uh, I just enrolled, and now I'm a, a junior at UNO. Oh, that's good. Yeah. So there is an aviation program at UNO that you can enter in order to get your bachelor's in aviation because is that something they require from you? A bachelor's? Yeah, yeah. If you want to, um, so you don't know program, they got a partnership with Southwest. So they want you to get your bachelor's in aviation and then uh, and then fly for like net jet, the smaller jets, and then uh, for a year and then go straight to Southwest. Okay. So like they, um, it's a guaranteed job, right? Okay. So it's almost like a pilot program yeah. for pilots. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, so that's good. So then once you get your bachelor's in aviation from UNO and um, it doesn't end there though because when I was telling you guys earlier that it's a self-funded license, tell the people more about that Denzel. Yeah, so right now I'm paying uh, $250 an hour for flight time and um, I need 750 So I was um, getting scholarships for college but um, my college is so expensive it was only paying for half and I was paying the rest out of pocket. I was, um, Working at Goodwill, getting stuff like reselling shoes, mm -hmm. and, um, just a lot of different things so I can make money, you know, stay rich. That's right. Yeah, yeah. That's and, a know. good hustle, what, 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 is, what is the amount total? Because when you said, say that one more time, the, the, the calculations. I yeah, calculated so um, $250 an hour. Plus, we live in Nebraska, so I might have to, throughout the winter, we, we might have to take breaks from flying because we, so, and it slowed down our process. So, you need, it's 250 an hour plus, um, Plus, it's 350 once you get your commercial. So all together, you're looking at about 700 hours to 900 hours, uh, a total like 60k. All okay. So it's 60 thousand dollars self-funded. Yeah. So you have to find the money to pay 250 dollars an hour, um, up to 750 hours, mm -hmm. and then after 750 hours, it goes up to 350. I figure out, well, um, once I get to 750, I'll, I'll be fine. I'll okay. have all my licenses by then. Okay. I, I should be, be How much does the pilot make a year? Right now, we're looking at 200K a year. Mm. Or more. Or and more, it's yeah. a shortage. Yeah, it's because true. once COVID-19 hit, those pilots, they were getting sick, they were dying, or they were retiring. Mm -hmm. And so what's going on now with the flight transportation is that if a pilot has the slightest symptoms of COVID, he but can't fly. Yeah. He cannot fly. They have, so this summer alone, for summer travel, there has been close to 20 to 30,000 flights canceled because they don't have the pilots. And people are sitting in these airports until they can find a pilot healthy enough to fly these people uh, home. So where the fuck is everybody working? Like, like <laughs> even even in like fast food restaurants, it's just two people working there. Yeah. Then they talk about the shortage in pilots. Yeah. What the fuck is everybody doing? Like in 2023, I mean 2022. I don't know why I keep. I wanted to be 23 so bad. It's 2022 right now. So everybody who's been working um, since 2000 and 2020 hit, they had. 401k they had pensions they had savings well, so good. right now they are like shit if i'm sick and i don't want to die i got the money to pay my mortgage i got the money to pay my car mm -hmm. note i got the money to pay my insurance and i'm going to stay my ass at home plus there's a lot of um federal grant funding that's helping a lot of people who are suffering from COVID-19 or who need help with their bills. Like the, the MAC program or whatever, the rent assistance program and things like that. But um, I wanted to ask you, like, is there anything else that you would have wanted to do besides be a pilot? pilot? Um, really just um, be with black kids. Like, um, mm. That's really, that's the main goal. Like um, flying is the main goal while I'm flying. I want to go to cities and reach out, you know, push aviation to black communities. Cause like now everybody, 
anything on the internet, that's what they want to be. That's what they see. So it's like uh, knowing like the impact that that I got, and I'm starting to see I can really. So you want to help the community? Yeah, I'll help the community. Yeah, that's dope, man. That's what we're here for, man. That's what that's what the smartest dumb people do. Uh, yo, yo, you got some places for? Them? Yeah, so, okay, so after we get our bachelor's, after we do our 750 hours of flight time that you have to self-fund, mm -hmm. then, because you're getting your UNO degree, you'll just be um, going right into Southwest. Is that how that works? Well, I'm, I'm actually, um, I'm going to go corporate. So, um, Kiewit, um, has okay. a private, he has a private jet, Net, uh, there's a company called NetJet and uh, SkyWest. So I'm, I'm looking more at uh, the corporate route. Okay. Um, with that, um, if I was to work for the airline, you're really just a regular pilot until you get like five years. Okay. You know, like it. And if I was to work for private, I get paid two times more. I can be home more. I'll probably only five years. But you five, know what? There more. are a lot of people out there who need private pilot jets. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the celebrities need private pilot jets. And mm -hmm. they get paid millions of dollars. Well, I, I met a, a private pilot once and he said that he just got to be on call. Uh, so he just, he got a cell phone. Once mm -hmm. that celebrity calls him or whoever it is, that millionaire calls him, he, it don't matter if he's eating lunch with his kids, he got to go, he got to go fly. You can actually, uh, you can mainstream that a little bit better than that because I'm not your bitch. But that's, <laughs> no, that's no, I agree with you, but that's no, what the, I'm not going to be nobody's bitch. I don't give a damn. That's what the requirement is. I'm pretty sure you know more than I do about it, but yeah, that's what he said the requirement is, is yeah. that you have to be on call for real, for real. Like, once, yeah. the motherfucker might be like, uh, my mom is sick in London, and yeah. you got to get out of bed, with, even if you got... Okay, I understand that. So the, the pilots who want to transcend their life like that, yeah. and, you know, is, is down for the almighty dollar, and it's just going to yeah, leave yeah. their, you know, their families at drop of a dime, okay, that's fine, because you're getting the money to do it. But, you, listen, if you call me, and you like, I got an emergency, you have to give me 24 to 48 hours before I'm flying you any uh, fucking where. I'm a private uh, jet, the private pilot. Like so, so if you like flying for like a rapper or a millionaire, some some of them would, but like for corporate companies, they're going to set you up. Maybe you might, um, you got to call in Wednesday morning, like be prepared. Okay. And they're going to they gonna give you that. that sounds good. If you like just doing work with Drake. Yeah, they might have to let's go. You don't always got to do it. They, they might hire like a little charter. Like it's, yeah. like, it's pilots that um, the airline might hire for sure. Right. Like they're doing. They, uh, go, uh, it's mostly military pilots. They do that a lot. They, okay. they fly on a commercial jet. Okay. And then they go fly um, on a private jet. Yeah. So it's like, mm -hmm. I'm sorry. It's a, it's a lot of different ways, but it is people that just get right up. They don't know. Yeah, yeah, but no, you're not going to do me yeah. like that. I, I, I ain't doing that. I can't, keep, I can't stop thinking about when he said he wanted to help the community and he wanted to work with children. You yeah. know you can do that on the ground, right? I'm, I'm doing that right now, so I'm uh, currently working at the North Omaha Boys and Girls That's Club. That's dope. I'm saying like you don't have to be a pilot to, oh, to, yeah, to yeah. give back to the community. Yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah, so yeah, I'm working at the um, North Omaha Boys and Girls Club. And uh, actually, this summer um, we were giving out uh, test flights and uh, having That's kids cool. uh, fly drones and gliders Ooh. at the um, at um, Oakview Mall. If you go into uh, Oakview Mall, it's called ABLAC. It's a whole aviation center, and we're really trying to push minorities. I've been getting a lot going. So okay, so the Oakview has an aviation center. Yep, yep. I don't think anybody knows that in yep. our community. Yeah, it just got Mall? yeah, it just got open last year. Yeah, okay, I'm trying to get it out. Yeah, and then um. Well, well, now now people on the podcast. And okay, so that's boys, good. Yeah. So, yeah. do they let you take the Boys and Girls Club van? Like, can you take kids out to the you? Yeah, I can't. Not me, but but they have people. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, they have people. Um, transport. Yeah, yeah transport. But yeah, but I'm just saying they can give you permission too because I mean you are a pilot. You can offer them more enriching education on the simple fact about being a pilot and how to get to it, and then. When you take them there, you'll be able to explain things that the other people can't. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes you just get these drivers at these companies and they're like, okay, we're going here, but do you know why we're going here? Can mm -hmm. you answer any of these kids' questions? So that's why we need to put people in position to get these kids to cross over. Mm -hmm. I think I've never, ever been on a flight and my pilot was black. And I can honestly say I've never ever uh, been around a young black man 
I uh, appreciate you, King, for coming yes, through. Sir. I've never been around a young black man that his goal was to be a pilot. So this is a first for both of us. Mm -hmm. But that if, if we're 40, we're 40 plus, okay? Mm -hmm. So for us to just now experience this, that says a lot about how we are, we are lacking that in our community. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So, yeah, for sure. So we do need more people like you. And, uh, and I'm telling you, when it comes to the community, all we need is a face of something. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And that's what Michael Jordan became to the NBA. Yeah. And, and everybody loved basketball. And that's what Michael Vick became to the NFL. And that's yeah. why we love the NFL. Like, we always need a face. And I'm talking about black communities. We always need to put a face on why is this or, or what business is this. And you're giving them that. You're giving them, and, and should, they should make a logo of your airplane <laughs> that you own or whatever. I got a logo on Mars. Tell us on Mars. He got me a little Captain yeah, Phillips. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. So, yeah. You need a brand. Because, yeah, for sure. Because we don't, we don't see that. Like, I ain't never had a homie be like, I want to be a pilot. I know, me yeah. either. Because like, <laughs> I, I, yeah, I reached yeah. out to his mom, and I was like, you know, we need Denzel on the show because we want to basically broadcast you know what he's doing how he's doing it and, and we want to educate the community that is self-funded yeah. mm -hmm. and you know he needs help so we definitely want to you know get him some help and get him some corporate funding because the boys and girls club they definitely can give you some money mm -hmm. um on your flight time and then i could talk to my dad about that because he's there every day and then um we can get you know i can just talk to some more corporate companies about getting you some money because a lot of people in our community you know they're living in poverty yeah. so it's hard for them to donate so we got to look out to the people who actually have the money to give in abundance and basically get him his flight time i mean he shouldn't have to pay for it i don't think you should have to pay for it i'm sorry i don't and it costs a lot of money i agree so anyway, we talked to Denzel about um, aviation, what it costs, how to get there, what the struggles are, and you know, he has a good mom and dad that's going to take care of him and push him over the finish line. And as a community, we just need to help him um, find the funding and get the money. If you can't help, you know, ask your company if they can help or, you know, if you know a corporate um, CEO somewhere, you know, reach out to them. So. It's all about networking and finding the resources and stuff like that. So what we're going to segue to right now is something that the black community struggles with and they've always struggled with, and that's child support. <laughs> so we're going to talk about um, this clip um, about child support. So watch this and we'll be right back. This is the shit I got to go through. It's like I got to choose between my child and my marriage. And the shit getting old, it getting very old and yeah, frustrating. You see your child in your marriage? What is you doing? Well, I mean, like, what's going on? I'm recording, no, no, man. No, 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 I ain't gonna record it because you ain't dropping that shit. I don't give a damn about no Facebook, no YouTube, or nothing. No, 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 no. And I don't care nothing about that. Because my thing is, for, hey, you pay $500 a month. You can drop it. I'm gonna put your business out there. You pay $500 fucking dollars a month in child support, and ain't nobody been doing no extra. No shoes, no clothes, no toys, no nothing. Fuck all that. What you talking about, man? My son needs some shoes. I don't give a damn. No, they didn't. Yeah, they she can get the shoes out of child support yeah, money. Yeah, she yeah, yeah. she yeah. get the shoes out of child support money. That's what you pay child support for. The court ordered child support. You ain't got to do shit else. And she ain't get the nothing else. She should have never took the fucking child support out if she needed more money. You shouldn't feel like that, though. Why shouldn't I feel like that? Yeah, that's my fucking child. I don't fuck that child. Fuck you, too. I don't give a damn about that. Shoes? Come on, to get some extra shoes and you pay five hundred fucking dollars. A month and child support, you ain't buying no shoes. You ain't buying no fucking shoes. No you buy shoes. No you buy them shoes. You buy them shoes. That's it. Ain't no fucking that's it, man. That's, that's it. I'm telling you. You pay child support. Still what you paying the child support is for? I'm saying still though. If you need some shoes, I'm gonna get the shoes. No, you ain't getting no shoes. Like, you ain't.
fuck is you doing? Get your ass up out of here. Get your ass up out of here. That's what I knew. I'm getting your ass. You want to buy some shoes? You want to buy some shoes? It won't be in here. I'm getting you up out of here. Get you up out of here. Man, man. No. Uh-uh. Come on, what's up, man? Look, ain't no problem. No, you want to get shoes? You want to get shoes? Really? So we just watched a clip of a couple who was married. Um, the man pays $500 a month to his um, child's mother. And so his wife is saying, you know, if you buy those shoes, you know, you might as well just pack your stuff up, get out of here. She already get $500. That's enough. But as a wife, you know, if your husband has more money and more than enough to support his household with his wife but can also give extra to his child then he should be able to do that without an argument i don't understand now if he cannot maintain his bills with his wife's home and he's talking about going out to buy his child maybe um two or three hundred dollar uh a pair of shoes because shoes have gone up oh, yeah. i mean the shoes my son wanted was six hundred dollars so he had a summer job, so the money came out of his bank account every um, two weeks because he bought it on Afterpay. I set up Afterpay for him. The shoe company let him do Afterpay, which made him do the... What's Afterpay? Afterpay is um, an app that most of these companies have went to because of COVID-19. So it's like layer away, but you get, the, you get the product right away. Mm -hmm. I've never so, heard of it. That's so crazy. it's called Afterpay. So I um, set my son's bank account up to Afterpay. So they took $130 um, out of his bank account every two weeks until the $600 was paid off. So he got, you know, his shoes right away. You walk out right away with the I'll shoes. Would you let him buy some $600 there? <laughs> Listen, this is his first job and he had the money and he's like, Mom, I'll pay for him. Then I let him do it because... He is understanding the responsibility of paying for something high end. And this is what you have to do. What about six hundred dollars? You probably can get a car. He can, but he's only fourteen. Oh, okay, okay. I'm about to say, but that's what I would be like, son. Well, she you get a whole car for six hundred dollars. <laughs> he got um he got some Jordans. He got some Jordans. They only have four pair. So they had one in a size twelve, which he needed, and, and that was size it. Size twelve at fourteen? Yeah. I told him. Well, I took him to the doctor. They said he was 5'11". Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Tiny 16. He wouldn't be wearing a 14. Mm -hmm. Because the price going to go up. So, and that's what I'm saying. So, the price of shoes is going up. Even if you get a regular Nike, you're paying about 150 yeah. You know? And so, like, what do you guys think? Like, if this guy is already paying $500 a month to his ex that they have a baby together, do you think that's enough, Anthony? Uh, before we go any further, do you have any kids? No, no, I don't got no kids. All right, well, I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. Uh, I was appalled at the video because I don't give a fuck what the situation is. My kids come before anybody. My kids come before me, okay? Mm -hmm. and, and if if and I want people to understand this because I'm a black man that pays child support. I'm that black man on this panel. Uh, my homeboys laughed and joked with me when I said I went to the child support office and said that that's not enough to help provide for my daughter. They tried to charge me $75 a month because I, I didn't have a job at the time. I, and then I said, hey, you know, I do get unemployment. Uh, my daughter needs at least $300 a month. And that's just at the minimum with me not having a job. So yeah. uh, recently, two days, three days ago, I just took my daughter school shopping. She gets the, the whatever amount of money her mom gets per month because I don't count that as in tell your mama to buy you some school stuff with your, with your child support. That's not how it works. Child support is for... Uh, helping maintain the home for your children. Now, uh, the, I got her hair done, I got her some shoes and two pair of shirts. Don't get me wrong, shoes are expensive. Uh, I wind up paying like $360 for just her hair to get done, yeah. some shoes, and then this week I got to take her to get her nails done and a couple more outfits. Yeah. And it had nothing to do with child support. Yeah. Because, and, and like I said, if a woman is going to argue with you, 
about how you provide and take care of your child, get the fuck out of that situation. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. like, ain't no woman about to tell me what my daughter needs. Yeah. yeah. I, I don't believe in that. I'm like, cause I'm I'm like a, a A1 parent when it comes to like parenting because my parents were so fucking bad. Yeah. And I wanted to be completely the polar opposite of my yeah. parents. So now I know what it feels like to be that child. Yeah. I, when my daughter says to me, I want these Jordans, just get the Jordans. Now, now, 600, fuck no. Yeah. But you can get some, you can get some Jordan. Yeah. Might be some jump men's. Yeah. But you're going to get a Jordan. You're going to get something to make you feel like my dad does care. And, it, and like I said, it's not about child support. Because when women box men in or compartmentalize child support, and mm -hmm. think, no, it's not fair to the woman that has to take care of these kids. And listen, my kid's mom take her to school. She mm -hmm. need gas money. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Yeah, because gas is high. She paid She paid the rent. She paid. She does shit that I don't have to worry about. Right, right. Water, lights, air, you know, that is a big what adjustment. You think, what you think? Yeah, I think she crazy. Like, um, the father <laughs> going to want to provide for his child. They like, should. You want your child asking somebody else for some money? Yeah. That's really how they go to the street. You want your kid asking somebody right. else on the block? Right. Oh, I need money for shoes. I need money to get get my hair cut. Like, yeah. That, that's one of the biggest problems. I'm young and I can see that. Yeah. So that, that's a big problem. But I don't got kids, but I can say as far as me being a dad, you're going to sit up here and tell me I can't buy my, my, my child some shoes? Like, that. that's yeah. just crazy. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I right feel... Then. You know, I felt like in this situation, the woman definitely attacked her husband. Um, she put him on the defense. You know, she put and him. Just close. I want everybody. This shit is the the video is so relevant in our community. She start packing this man's clothes. Now you can't convince me that this man don't pay rent there. This man, if he's paying five hundred dollars in child support, obviously he got some money. That ain't no little bit of money. He paid five hundred dollars in child support. Then he want to turn around and get his kids some shoes. I'm pretty sure he's helping take care of your home too. And your yeah. ass is stupid enough to want to kick him out. That's not. That's the world that some men live in. Yeah. And I'm telling you, this is the scariest shit ever. I'm gonna pay your rent, and the minute I don't like what you don't like what I say because my name ain't on the lease or whatever the case may be, you think I'm gonna get out? Yeah. No, that's that's what's wrong with black men. Black men be tortured. Yeah. And I don't mean by just black men. I do I mean, believe that he was tortured in this video. Yeah. And I do believe that he was made to feel like he had to choose between buying the shoes for and his, his baby yeah. or his wife. And he did say that. I got to choose between my wife or these shoes. And my thing is like, you know what? You can buy your child the world and the moon and the stars as long as our bills are taken care of you can That's buy your child whatever you want to buy your child I would never step in the middle of a man buying his child anything I don't care if she wanted or he wanted candy canes from fucking California or Mexico yes. if that man wanted to go get that for his babies then let him do that, but what if what if uh, what, as we sit and talking about her, what if they bills wasn't paid? So say for example, so if yeah. the bills in the home are not paid between the husband and the wife, and he is already paying five hundred dollars a month in child support for this child, and they are struggling in poverty, mm -hmm. then there's a conversation to be yeah, had. Right. But the way she had the conversation was torturing, cool. it was attacking, and it put him on the defense to rebel against her. Yeah. That's what black women have to understand is that there's a way to approach a man who's having these struggles, and there's a way to have this conversation so that everybody is taken care of. Because when you have the conversation, you have to make sure that your needs are met, your husband's needs are met, and the child needs are met. There are three people that are involved in this conversation. And you can't just have the conversation about me, 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 or I, 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 facts, I facts. because it's not going to work. There is a divorce that's going to be on the horizon if you approach your conversation that way. And so I think we touched a lot about yeah, that. Yeah. And I think we're going to move on to, oh, we're going to move on to Trump. Okay. <laughs> Because I do like to talk politics, and that is one of my things because there is a big difference between white politicians and black politicians. Now, uh, Donald Trump was our former president who took documents from the White House that no other president has ever done in the history of 
being a president. I didn't know that. He he's the only one who did that. Uh -huh. He is the only one who has staff pack up top secret documents and take it to his Mar-a-Lago home in Florida. So we're going to watch this. Clip. Let's go through some of the highlights from here. There's an executive grant uh, of clemency for Roger Stone. Uh, there's info on the president of France. Uh, there's uh, miscellaneous secret documents, miscellaneous top secret documents, miscellaneous top secret documents again, miscellaneous confidential documents, miscellaneous secret documents, confidential document, miscellaneous secret documents, miscellaneous confidential documents, miscellaneous top secret uh, documents, miscellaneous, miscellaneous top secret documents. On that last one, someone accidentally added an E to the end of top, so it said Topi, but someone <laughs> crossed it out and put the initials next to it uh, to make sure that, that was everything was checked out before they uh, executed that uh, that. Just go through some of the highlights from here. There's an go through some of the highlights from here. There's an executive. <laughs> okay, so during the clip, we just had this big conversation about Trump, and I'm telling y'all, Trump should have a RICO case. It is definitely organized crime to have your staff pack up top secret documents and evidence about the history of the presidency and take it to your vacation home in Mar-a-Lago, Florida. So the FBI did get a warrant from the judge, from a federal judge, to search his home. Now, as a president, you do get Secret Service men um, throughout the lifetime um, of, of your life um, after you're done with being the president. So the Secret Service did let the FBI in because if they didn't, they would have been in jail. Mm -hmm. Um, number five is that they found so many documents that they couldn't even believe this man was able to walk out of the White House with these documents. He wasn't stopped. And so, you know, we're just talking about how is this possible and how is he not in jail yet? Now, Denzel, now you hit on some good notes. Now, tell us what you think. First off, he, he should at least get 40 years. If you're getting 16 for a grant, but he, uh, for <laughs> thank Rico, you, you, thank you, you thank you. You're getting 10 years for, for just being a part of Rico selling drugs, and he's still in documents, federal government documents, and he already had conspiracy theories of Russia. So these, these the documents could be anybody. Hey, yeah, that, that's exactly. the problem. You already had conspiracy theories with a whole other country that's fighting the whole war right now, and we giving money. To the, to the people Thank they you. fight, so he we don't even know what side he's on at this point. I just, what the the thing that baffles me the most is how fucked up this president was and is. <laughs> and not me. And, and he's talking about running again. Listen, it, this is the uh, Donald Trump is the the definition of white privilege, and what I mean by that is. There's black quarterbacks out there that then paid their dues, that then did it. They get suspended Mike Vick. games. Mike Vick. They get, no, I'm talking about Deshaun Watson. Yeah. Let's 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 talk about Deshaun yeah. Watson. I'm just trying to explain to you what white privilege is. Deshaun Watson. Uh, he 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 paid offered masseuse money to 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 do sexual things to him, right? Mm -hmm. Then you have Ben Roethlisberger. Yeah. He was literally raping women in club bathrooms. This is a fact. It got swept under the rug. Deshaun Watson, as a black man, will never it will never be swept under the rug. He's gonna live that shit. When he's in the Hall of Fame, before he go to the Hall of Fame, if they allow him to because of what he went through, mm -hmm. the first thing they're gonna say is the same way they did Kobe Bryant. They're gonna bring up his rape case. Mm -hmm. So so I'm just trying to understand as a white president, right? President is supposed to be the top tier fucking human being. That's right. So I want people to understand the president has fucked this country up in so many ways, mentally. Like, I got anxiety because of Trump. Because now every motherfucker that has a Make America Great Again hat on makes me think they're a racist. Uh -huh. you know? So I'm just trying to understand, as a president, at what point in time do we stop saying, Mr. President, at what point in time do we stop, because I, I agree with you when they said, this, these are the perks that come with being a president. But this is the worst president we've ever had. And he's not getting any better. This nigga is getting indicted by the feds. Man. Like, the president is getting indicted. Man. The the most dirt that ever happened in the presidency presidency was uh, uh, Clinton getting some head. Oh no, it was Nixon. Uh, Nixon still in the It fires. was Nixon. What Nixon doing? Now, uh, he did something. Now Nixon. <laughs> I didn't hear. What did he do? You know, Nixon. Okay, I'm gonna tell y'all, President Nixon. Whenever they talk about corrupt president, Nixon is in the top five. But um, I don't know exactly the logistics of the case. I'll tell y'all again um, when we have David Mitchell on the show.
talking politics, but Nixon is up there. Um, but Trump is the most ghetto president we ever had. Yeah. Yeah, Nixon, and so they always classify ghetto with being black, but no, ghetto has no color. No, it doesn't. Okay, now he, he's super ghetto. When you come on live TV and you make fun of a mentally retarded person on live, and get away with it. We we're just trying to figure out where is America well, going. Well, he, his, his name was Mr. Grab by the pussy. You know what, <laughs> what I'm saying? And, and and we don't even understand that this this white this, like I said, I'm talking white privilege, man. Yeah. This this white man was the president of the United States, and like I said before, the the president is supposed to be the elite human being. The, the the ultimate, I understand compassion, I understand empathy, I understand what we need to do to stay strong. He's none of that. He is the most ratchet. He is the definition of a trailer ratchet. park. He's the definition of a trailer park dude with a blonde wig on. I'm telling you, he, he definitely ratchet and he definitely should have a Rico case. I'm sorry. Yeah. But um, Jessica Powell said he has all the people on the team he needs to make moves no one else has been able to. Plus, Donald is financially literate, extremely so, he was able to run the circle. And I do believe that. And I do believe Trump has no etiquette. Trump is the the dictionary definition of power hungry. And when I get the power, I'm going to dominate, 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 dominate. I'm going to take, 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 take. And if Joe Biden hadn't got in office when he did Trump would have been hand in hand with Putin on taking over Ukraine in order to funnel all their riches into Trump's private pocket not American pocket private pocket and y'all gotta understand when these um, big political figures go to war they funneling a lot of money into their private pocket because Bush did the same effing thing. Mm -hmm. Now the only one who got up in here to try to clean this shit up was Obama when he had executed, um, um, I wanna say Bin Laden because Bin Laden did spearhead the 9-11 thing. You know what I mean? So he had to go because he was gonna do the shit again. You know what I mean? And so that was a good thing on Obama's part but it's just like when we're black and we get in these political positions, we got to walk this fine line because had it been Obama that took all those documents, oh, clean, clean, I mean, they would have took his ass to jail. And you know, Trump was in New York when they raided Mar-a-Lago. Mm -hmm. But once they found those documents, mm -hmm. they should have had people on hand going to the Trump Tower to get Trump and taking his ass to yeah, jail. Yeah, we never see somebody not get arrested. Yeah. It's, oh, it's a federal, that's what I'm saying. What Denzel, Denzel is right. It's a federal case. I mean, we still, and like I, I was about to say, we literally watching rappers go to jail for just being artists. Mm. And, and, and Trump, the hilarious against Yeah, you. yeah. And, and we got this man, Trump, is throwing everything in our face. And again, this is the definition of white privilege. We got this man throwing everything in our face. Like you just said, after the feds raided his house and found the fucking documents, there's nothing to talk about, sir. Where's the handcuffs? Exactly. And But we live in a society where we just turn the other cheeks. We just, we we can't, just look away. You know what? We can't keep looking away. Yeah. As a black community, you know, we got to start standing up for what's going on out here in this white privileged world. Because when it comes to us, we can't do the same thing. And even if, you know, you are living in poverty and you feel like, shit, I'm living paycheck to paycheck. My bills is behind. I ain't got time to think about this. You better make time. Because your bills going to constantly be well, behind uh, if you don't start making time to comment yeah, against this shit, shit mm -hmm. share this shit, exploit this shit, and get these people to where they like, damn, this, is, this yeah. is all after. You know, I, I'm, I'm one of those people that, that when we going to storm the Capitol, you know what I'm saying? Like, like as, as, mm. as, as, a, as, a corp, as a as a whole, I'm talking about all communities, from the indigenous people. From Indians to, to Mexicans to black, the vulnerable like, communities. Yeah, yeah, the vulnerable communities. 
when when we gonna storm the Capitol and start caring about shit that white people was mad that they didn't get the right president. They wasn't even storming the Capitol for the right reasons. Right, yeah. right. We we might storm the Capitol because of Breonna Taylor. Just, we might, exactly. Yeah, we might storm exactly. the Capitol for a legitimate exactly. reason. But exactly. we're living in a world to where these motherfuckers are so privileged, they storming the Capitol because they don't like the way some votes went. You're right. Yeah. And they was storming the Capitol to get that box of votes because they didn't want to count it and they didn't want Joe Biden in. That's Rico the number two. No, that's Rico costumes. number one. That's organized and, crime, like yeah. Denzel was talking. The motherfuckers were wearing costumes, kicking their feet up on the white people. Like, yeah. I've Opening never seen their mail. Uh, that's, that's a that's federal crazy. offense. Stealing pictures, vandalizing sculptures. I think we touched on this enough because <laughs> we be going all day about how <laughs> fucked up this world is yeah. when it comes to the politics. But that's why I don't, I, the reason why I gave up on politics and I never really was into it is that. I just always noted, noticed that like they really don't give a fuck, and if we ain't ready exactly. to die, if we ain't ready to die about this shit, I and know. I mean literally from a standpoint of storming the capital and knowing we might be murdered or yeah. killed, yeah. there's no reason in me trying to convince people to go vote or do anything. Yeah. Because I, I just think that there's a secret organization. This is just my opinion. Yeah. I'm not trying to be a conspiracy theorist. Yeah. That we will never win until we start fucking shit up, and we got to go beyond targets. And uh, yeah. well, fans, please don't come to my little bitty ass place. And I'm but, just being honest with. Yeah, and we being know, honest, we and, but we haven't right committed right. no crimes. But um, my dad is on here, so Terrence Mackey Shout did coach. say, uh, coach T -Mack. He, "Yes." Oh, okay. <laughs> so he did coach. say, "Until we come together as a whole, they are going to keep screwing us over." and over and over and that is a big part of the black community being able to unite even if you don't agree yeah. and that's how the caucasian community Works. keeps winning because Works. they will unite with each other even though they, 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 they don't even yeah. though they don't agree and they will march on one element and they will all be one accord and mm -hmm. that's how y'all saw January 6th happen. I, I, I gotta break this down before we switch topics because it's dead on spot on when it comes to the way white people think. So I had, uh, I was at work this week and this lady name was Karen. And she said, my name is Karen, but I'm not really a Karen. Um, <laughs> and she wound up being a fucking Karen. Oh. <laughs> she, she told me, don't talk to none of the employees. Uh, go only through her. I was just a bunch of weird shit that's going on. And all I could think about was, I want to know how I feel to be white and just wake up smiling for no fucking reason. Like, Cause, like I wake up angry every day, yeah. just and it's from a standpoint of knowing how how unbalanced yeah. society it is. It is unbalanced. And, and like even from like motherfuckers are like I don't want oh uh, you get red assistance. Uh, we need listen. At this point, I used to be that person that I didn't want food stamps. It was embarrassing. I want every fucking government funded plan that you have available for me because I realize we are 400 and something years behind. Yeah, we are behind. And these Come motherfuckers on. are still, I'm yes, talking about even, even, even a, 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 a person to look me in the eye and say, I am not this person and is exactly that person. It says a lot about where we're at in society. They, so they told me, okay, so when I applied for food stamps, they said a family of three can only make seven hundred and twenty-three dollars a month. That's nuts. For a family of three, even wow. though inflation has went up, so I was immediately denied. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, my family can't live off of seven hundred. My son just ordered shoes that cost six hundred dollars. So what are you talking about? We can only make seven hundred dollars a month. So I was like, okay, enough with y'all. Uh, we just gonna have to budget it out, go to our little pantries, and just do what I think, we can do. I think do. that that would be the first thing the government should change to change the poverty rate is giving food stamps mm -hmm. to to the to the families that's making seventy thousand dollars a year. Listen, we gotta understand all of these rules were written, all of these rules and regulations was written by white people, and that, as we know how fucking sometimes things happen, which is privileged over the ones that's unfortunate. It's now time to get somebody in office to say yeah. we got to change the food step policy. We yeah. have to. There's families struggling out here, and they make it seventy thousand dollars a year. So we have. Because I, I always said, I said sixty five thousand yeah. dollars is poverty. Yeah. When your rent, if you rent an apartment, it's twelve hundred dollars, and homes are up to fifteen to seventeen, mm -hmm. and you only make. 
maybe fourteen, fifteen dollars an hour. How can you live yes, if you have a family and you're the only one working? How can you live? This is ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. We Trump. Got, absolutely ridiculous. We only got seven minutes. Well, I think we should touch on that, uh, the student loan thing. Okay, yeah, that so yeah, yeah, so we are going to talk um, about this clip about student loan debt, how this politician thinks that it should not be erased and eliminated. We do not support student loan forgiveness. We cannot do it. It's irresponsible language. We can't forgive everyone's student loan debts. My wife has student loans. We paid them back. My daughter has student loans. She will pay them back. I, I don't want to make a... No, what, what type of question? I flew, I flew. Have you guys seen Top Gun 2 yet? Anybody seen Top Gun 2? No, I'm not Top Gun 2. Man, you just told me. 65? 65 million. Did you, did you count all the, uh, all the, all the, yeah, you gotta count all the stuff on it. They can get up there, you know, they can get up there. 65 million dollars per plane. We spend more money on the military in this country than most developed nations. Every program that they tell you cannot be funded goes to a plane, a boat, or the repairing of the nations we destroyed in the cause of democracy where those nations don't end up in democracies. And this democracy that, or this republic that we have that is a representative democracy continues to tell us in the quest for democracy for other people that they will deny you the freedoms and the liberties with your own tax dollars. That's a problem. Because that's your money that paid for the plane and then told you your education couldn't be free. Do not support student loan forgiveness. We can So we're talking about the fact that this politician said that student loans shouldn't be raised, it shouldn't be forgiven because his wife had to pay all hers back, his daughter is gonna have to pay all hers back. The thing is, education should not be for a price. We all should be getting our education for free because there's enough government dollars to fund these colleges, to fund these elementary schools and high schools without having to pay one dollar. Now the private schools, they have different, you know, education, different way of doing things, that's fine. But they have big multi-billion dollar donors that fund these schools and then the kids' parents pay them a price, you know, to go here. So private schools, that's 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 nor here nor there. Mm -hmm. But when I'm talking about $250,000 in student loan debt, the only job that you can get is only paying you forty-five dollars to $65,000. And your monthly fee for your student loan debt is $800-something. How does that make sense? I mean, he, he's living proof. He, he's, he's, no. he's making the right decision for, for the profession he's choosing because he's making uh, six figures or maybe seven, depending on how good you are, you know, but I'm just saying that's the, the target. That should always be the target. When yeah. Like if you're going to go to school to be a, 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 a salesman at goddamn Walmart, you might as well just go work for Walmart. Uh -huh. and, work the way up. and work yeah. your way we're up. So exactly. lost. We're so lost with education. We don't, we don't, we, it's time for us to open our eyes and realize that a lot of the education plan field is for for people to be state, to stay poor. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like everybody, Everybody proud to say they in school, mm -hmm. but ain't nobody proud to say well, how much they owe. Oh, yeah. You know, because I had a friend of mine that went to school for damn near 10 years to be a, a pharmacist. She was, in the, I'm, I'm sure she's still every bit of $100,000 plus. Or more, and, yeah. And it's just like, I kept saying to her, why don't you just stop? Yeah. Just, you already work for this company. She already worked for Walmart. Yeah. And I'm like, you already work for Walmart in the pharmacy. Yeah. If you stay there for 10 years, you got a better chance of being a pharmacist than Schooling don't teach you how uh, nothing about life, man. No, it don't. It just teaches you about the economics behind the reading and the l lingo and all that shit. Yeah. But when it comes to real life, schooling is not the option. So if it's gonna be a, become you're in debt, a hundred thousand plus. Yeah. Find another find another way to eat because yeah. I'm telling you, school. You, 
it's just sad because I know that people use school as a badge. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Uh, yeah. As a badge of honor. And I, I yeah. like, I just think that's the foolish way of thinking because, yeah. like, my son, he, he came out of uh, high school and he works with my father. My son makes nineteen dollars an hour. My dad been in his job for thirty five years and he don't make that much more than my son. Mm -hmm. So I'm just saying, like, there are jobs and tools that you can use that has nothing to do with for schooling. Sure having to owe student loans. And I feel like that's another way to help people get out of this debt that we're in and all of this anxiety yeah. coming from owing schools and all of this shit. And then there, there's there's a lot of different opportunities out there, like Metro right now. They have all these trades, I think 24 months or 18 months at the least. You can be an electrician, a mechanic. I mean, just all these jobs that start off at like $60 an hour. Like this one guy, my air conditioner went out. I had to call this guy my dad knew. He's like, okay, I'll come over after church. 20 minutes, he had my air conditioner unplugged, rebuilt in 20 minutes, and guess what? 20 minutes was $150. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Right after church, he said, oh, before I go to brunch, I'll come over. Yeah. And guess what? I paid for his whole family to eat in 20 minutes. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. And it's free. Right now, Metro is having this thing where you can enroll and it's super free because, you know, my son doesn't know what he wants to do. He's 14 years old. He keeps talking about real estate, but I'm like, shit, real estate license is really, really hard. I know people who took it four or five times and they failed it. So, and he's not a good test taker. I wasn't a good test taker. So, you know, I'm just like, there are so many different opportunities to go where you won't have to be in student loan debt. But I do think student loan debt should be forgiven. And I think education should be free. And I don't care how far you go, all the way up into your doctrine, I think it should be free. It's absolutely ridiculous what, this, what these schools charge. Uh, I want to say to this young man, like, I'm, I'm, I'm impressed by what you're doing. I'm impressed too. Um, and I want you to know, young king, you can do anything. You don't have to be a pilot. I'm not. I'm just throwing this out there. Mm -hmm. yeah. Don't ever find your dream, which is obviously your passion is to help kids. Find your dream. Don't get caught up in the titles. Don't get caught up in the badges. And just live your life the best way you can because there's always money available to make. Mm -hmm. So, like I'm saying, if you get in this aviation class and you feel like they, they want to charge you $600,000 to go to school and all this shit, there's a way that you can make money and then live out your dreams. Yeah. So so first goal is make money, mm -hmm. then live out your dreams. And I feel like a lot of our people get lost in the sauce. And, and like I said, I, I just hate our kids going to school for a badge. There's so many people, I'm getting my master's and I'm like, I don't give a fuck about none of that. You work at Walmart. Oh, yeah. I know. You work I at, know. So, I know. So yeah. you, I mean, you definitely have to get a mentor too mm -hmm. and you definitely yeah. have to get, Thanks. you know, if, even if you do get the education and it is a badge to you, definitely find someone, help you advertise that, help you get into a position to where you can be financially secure and you can take right. care of your family. And I do think for Denzel that, you know, as the smartest dumb people, we're definitely going to try to um, reach out to some different corporations that we are involved with that is going to try to give him some checks toward aviation. If yeah. they have to write the checks um, directly to um, the school or the aviation company where he's doing his flight hours. Um, we want to try and find money for this young man. Thanks to pay for the rest of his hours. This young man goes to college, he works at the Boys and Girls Club, and he also has to do additional flight hours in order to get his commercial pilot license. So we want to um, try to alleviate as much stress off of him as, he, as we can and off of his family. So we're just asking that everybody um, that has tuned in today, if you guys know a corporation that would donate to a young um, black American man who wants to be a pilot, please inbox us so we can reach out to the corporation to get him some money. We can share his GoFundMe, but we definitely want him to be a success. We don't want him to buckle under stress and we want other young black men who are looking up to him to make it so they can feel like it's possible in order to get other people into this program. And Denzel may end up 
developing a program to help young black men figure out these steps and so that they can get into it too. And so that would be just a nonprofit program for him, but that would be after he makes it. So it's a journey, but we definitely gonna make sure, we definitely gonna make sure um, that this young man is successful. Any guest that comes on to the smartest dumb people, we wanna definitely make them um, their best selves, figure out how to support them, figure out how to network and to make our guests the most successful people that they can be. And that's what we are here for. And that is the end of our show. <laughs> so, um, uh, Denzel, tell them how they can reach your GoFundMe or your Instagram or here, or wherever they can uh, reach you at. Okay, yeah, you can uh, reach my, my GoFundMe. is um, Denzel Dial. It's, um, uh, I just got it up. I'm getting a YouTube on uh, soon. Um, so I got a lot of different things coming. I'll just ask them um, to... Uh, the black community, just corporate uh, communities, just to help me out, because I will be the ones that that give back. I you, need, you need to start selling those shirts too, brother. Right? Selling these shirts, yes, okay. You do. And, and, and matter of fact, uh, I'm gonna holler at you after this. We'll we'll, we'll, okay. we'll make some shit shake with that. Okay. Um, but you should definitely start selling those in the community, and that's a good way of helping your your funds For get sure. a little bit um, better. For sure. Uh, yeah. yeah. So anyway, this is the CEO, Anthony. He joined me today to uh, do this show. I'm your host, Yo-Yo. I want y'all to have a good week. Uh, Keep the negativity away from you and definitely be your best self. And I'll be back August 28th. All right, guys, what I need for you guys to go ahead and do is go over to our YouTube page. Make sure you like, subscribe there. And also check out our Instagram and make sure you follow us there, man. We'll give a follow back for show. Holla at us. Alright guys, what I need for you guys to go ahead and do is go over to our YouTube page, make sure you like, subscribe there, and also check out our Instagram, and make sure you follow us there, man, we'll give a follow back, for sure, holla.